Hey everybody, welcome back to the next installment of Woman Once Removed, my life story. Hey y'all! <laughs> what a difference. <laughs> so how y'all doing? Well, I haven't really made a woman much removed in a good while, so I thought I would do something. Yeah. And I was thinking about what I wanted to talk about, and I decided today I wanted to talk about the type of jobs I've had in my life, starting from when I was a child, to kind of sh show you an idea of where I got the strength in my life to do whatever I needed to do, to go anywhere I needed to go. And it all started with my first jobs. Of course, most of you know that I was born and raised on a farm in North Carolina in the foothills of the Appalachian Mountains. And so being raised on a farm, we're not like city kids that, that only have maybe a few chores around the house, if even that much, while they're growing up. I had actual chores. I had actual things I had to do on a daily basis because we had a farm, we had animals, and I had to go and feed those animals. And even though I was too young to even pick up a bale of hay, I could climb into that loft and push one down and take my pocket knife out and cut it open and feed the cows and the horses their hay. And then I had to feed dogs because my daddy raised fox dogs. So he had a big lot full of them. And then there were some chickens. And on occasion, we raised pigs. So I would have to make sure everything was fed. Well, all that was hunky-dory. But then, uh, about the time I turned 13, maybe a little bit before actually turning 13, um, my daddy asked me to go to work, where he worked part-time in an abattoir. For those who don't know what an abattoir is, it's a slaughterhouse. Yeah, you know, I, I was always, <laughs> as feminine inside as I am today. So it was not something I wanted to do. My daddy requested it of me. And of course I got to keep the money and I enjoyed the money part of it. But I did not, I did not enjoy the work. Now, I had been in and out of the abattoir all of my childhood because my daddy worked there part-time, his brother worked there full-time, and his uncle worked there full-time. And so I was in and out of there a lot, but I would have nightmares of the place because it was horrible. I thought, I just can't do this. My mama said, hey, just think of it that you're picking up money you know, that green stuff. She knew I wanted some money. So, yeah, I decided to do that. And it was the most horrible thing I have ever in my entire life had to deal with. So after that, no job that I ever had ever came close to being that horrible. My job was to be available whenever they slaughtered an animal. Because whenever they brung it out, after they killed it, they had to hang it up and cut its throat so it could bleed out. Okay, my job was to take a squeegee and a, and a hose pipe and make sure all that blood was down the drain because they, blood would make you slip and fall and they didn't want to do that. So that was my job to do that. 
Then they would cut that animal and all the insides would come out. Of course, by then it's in their way because they're working on the meat. I would have to take a 50 gallon drum and pick that stuff up with my hands, but I had on rubber gloves and a rubber apron and all that. But I'd have to pick that stuff up and put it into a 50 gallon drum and then with a dolly, wear that out to the back. It was like a back porch because people would come and get that. They used it for things like dog food. They would cook it on a, uh, an open fire on, in a wash pot and add some cornmeal to it and that would make food for the dogs. Okay. Then when they got through skinning that meat, that beef, or goat, or whatever they were killing, I would have to drag that heavy hide all the way down a hall to the hide room. And then I would have to place that hide on top of the layers of hides that were already there and roll it out nice and smooth and salt the whole raw top side of it. And if you killed a lot of beef, that was a lot of doing to put all that in there. And then usually because I was known to be a cook, I loved to cook since I was able to walk. So they would cut some meat, some, the select part of the meat as they would be butchering it. And they would bring it back to the kitchen and I would cook that meat. Sometimes I would make country style steak. Sometimes I would make beef stew. All kinds of things I had to make with this fresh meat that I had just seen breathing a few minutes before. And all this was horrible to me. It was horrendous. Well, about that same time, my middle brother got married. And when he got married, he left home. So I was stuck with doing his chores on the farm. Stuff I hadn't had to do. And one of those main things was being my father's assistant on the farm, having to be there and be available, whether he was plowing or whatever. I had to be available to help. That's when I learned to drive a tractor. I would be the one if my grandfather was farming. My brother had been doing that and my oldest brother before him. So all of a sudden it was my responsibility to get out in those hot fields when my grandfather would be combating wheat or, or uh, they would be picking corn or whatever. I would have to be available. Now for that kind of job, I never got any pay for that, none. But I did what I made at the abattoir. That was mine. And I did raise calves and they would go to the sale and, and I could get that money too. But I hated being my father's assistant. It was horrible. Because I just was not man enough for that job. And I would get cussed out because I was stupid when it come to being a man and knowing what a man naturally will do and think and it just wasn't in my brain. It was not in my brain. And that's the reason when I say I know that I was female all my life because I could not function as a male. I could not. Not without getting in trouble and getting cussed out. The only one that did not cuss me out was my grandfather. That's the reason he loved me to the day he died. That's the reason he wanted to see me after I transitioned and had surgery because I had been there with him and worked in those fields with him. And he knew who I was, that I was, you know, nothing to be looked down on. But, and you know, I, I done other jobs as I got older. I went to work in a cotton mill. 
I wasn't crazy about that, but it was pretty good money. It wasn't nasty like the slaughterhouse. Mm -mm. It was clean. <laughs> it was hard work, but I dealt with it. Then in high school, I worked as a salesperson for a clothing store in Macon, Mississippi, right here where I live now. And it was pretty good. But whenever I left home to start my transition, I realized real quick how hard it was gonna to be to save the money for my surgery because um, I had to make minimum wage uh, as a salesperson or as a waitress. And I was good as a salesperson, but I sucked as a waitress. I couldn't keep all this stuff in my mind and keep all my tables straight. I was very apologetic for being stupid. <laughs> but uh, I wasn't none too good at none of that. <laughs> and then I went to work as a female impersonator in Olean's Lounge. Of course, they didn't make much money. So then I was offered to go to work in a cat house, working with customers that had no idea of my situation. But I risked it so that I could get my surgery as soon as possible. I worked the first year in there, and I had the money to have my breasts done. And I was starting to live a good life. Nice apartment, nice furniture, nice clothes, going to the beauty shop, all that kind of good stuff that I couldn't do at first. Then the second year, I had the money for my SRS. And I never went back. I never I started working regular jobs. I worked as a cosmetic consultant in Belk Department Store in Uptown Charlotte. And then I went to school, Central Park, Piedmont Community College, where I was studying art. I wanted, I had this fantasy of having a master's degree in art, fine arts, and being an archaeologist. I would have loved that. But I got married. And since I had taken all kind of photography classes at Central Piedmont, I opened a photography studio. And that's what I did for a good many years. And I really loved it. So I've done a lot of things in my life done some things that I wasn't extremely proud of, but I'm not ashamed of either. Because the things I've done and had to do made me strong. Made me strong where I can live and take care of anything I have to take care of. Because I can always think as long as I'm not picking up guts. I'm good. <laughs> I'm fine. Okay, well, all right, I'll let y'all go. That's all I wanted to talk about. I don't want to make it too long. Love y'all. I'm happy at least.